Hi everybody, I'm Chad. Um, I'm going to be doing my project on CodeSys. Uh, it's an H HMI and IDE um, and all of the above to do programming and all sorts of things with the Raspberry Pi and other, other devices as well. It doesn't have to be the Pi. It can be you know, real industrial equipment that can use this type of tool. So I'm going to do a little demo of this on the Pi. Um, so I'm going to go through a few things. Uh, today we're going to see um, we're going to talk a little bit about CodeSys. I'm going to show you some links of it. Um, you know, we're going to be using some plugins for this. So I'll show you the plugins that we'll be using to to communicate with the Raspberry Pi. I'll also be using another type of kit for the Pi besides what we did, besides the Pi Face. Um, I'll include the Pi Face on one of the projects, but um, for one of them, I'll be using the Canna Kit. So that's an add-on for the Raspberry Pi. It looks like this. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, there's a ribbon cable that goes into the Pi, the same place that the Pi Face Digital goes into. And then there's a GPIO uh, pinned output for uh, easy configuration for the GPIO. Then we have a breadboard. We saw this in class. And then we have the wires connecting it as well as an LED light that I'll be using for uh, this part of the project. So. Um, and then I'll be doing three demos. One of them is with that breadboard, um, using, all, all using CodeSys. Another, um, so I'll be going through. CodeSys is pretty neat. It allows you to, to do um, create a web server, essentially, and go into either through a mobile app or through a website and uh, implement through the HMI configuration. Or you can do it like we did manually on, t on the interface itself on the, the Raspberry Pi, push the button, have it interact. Same on the web side of things as well. And then I'll be doing a Pi Face um, digital, same thing that we use for the uh, traffic light simulation. I'll be using the Pi Face for that, and then I'll be integrating that with CodeSys. And I'll show a similar thing where I'm using uh, the CodeSys to interact with uh, the traffic light um, configuration that we have. Um, and then for the third one, I'll be doing, again, I'll be using the Pi and Code Sys, um, but this time I'll be interacting with two Pis. So I have two at my desk here, and um, one of them is an old one. Um, you could probably get it for 15 bucks now. So I have the old one sitting around, and then I have my regular Pi 2 that is here. And what I'll be doing is interacting through Modbus. Um, as you know, that's port 502 that we used before, and we, sh we showed how it was insecure. Uh, using, if someone could have gone on, on there, they could do, um, you know, they could do things over port 502. Because um, clear text, and you, you can see what's going on with that. So I'll be just using Wireshark just to sniff out, just to see that we can see the interaction interaction on Modbus traffic. Um, but I'll, I'll have them connecting, I'll send some output, and then we'll be able to see what, what it's received on the other end. Uh, so I, I have some resources here. So I'll include all this in my presentation if you want to link to it. Um, this just goes into the Raspberry Pi, um, the image, where to get it, where to go to CodeSys to download the information we need, the plugins, uh, information on the Canna Kit, and then installation of the Modbus um, detail because we'll need to do some installations on that to get the Modbus working correctly. Essentially, it's a server and a host for Modbus to communicate correctly. All right, so... Let's get right into it. So CodeSys, here's the website. Um, it's very, very high level here. So this tool can be used for many, many different different areas of industry. And we can get a free trial of it, which is great. And what you do is you go to CodeSys. You have to register in order to get it. Once you're registered, you can download um, the zip file or the executable. This is only for Windows here. Um, right now I'm running on a VM. You can do that as well if you only have a Mac. You can just run it on VM. And then we'll also be needing the plugin for the Raspberry Pi, which uh, it's a little silly, but you have to register again to get the plugin uh, through a different registration portal. And then you can download the Raspberry Pi, mo Pi module. And you can do quite a lot of things with it. You can interact with Modbus with the Raspberry Pi module. You can... Uh, if you add some other tools, you can interact with Ethercat, right? ProfiNet. 
Um, you can do the web visu. This is the the web interface that I'm, I was speaking on earlier. Um, and you can do all sorts of other things too. You can get really deep into this. You can hook up cameras to the Raspberry Pi and interact with, with that. You can take pictures with it, do all sorts of things. And then you could use actual real equipment. So you can use uh, these devices down here um, to interact with this I believe is the Pi Face, which we'll be interacting with. So you can get really, you could buy really expensive equipment and interact with CodeSys um, and watch it visually as well as live what's going on. And then this is the Canikit. The Canikit, like I was talking about, has a bunch of LEDs. It has a breadboard. Um, it has the GPIO that connects onto the breadboard. It has the ribbon cable that goes where the Pi Face is. And if you don't need the whole kit, because we already have a lot of the tools, you can buy just those components, the resistors, the switches, um, those things for, you know, under $15 to add this to it. All right, so I have some uh, files here. I have a code editor. Um, I'm using Visual Studio Code. And then I have a tool similar to PuTTY to SSH into these devices. And then for the files we'll be using, we have uh, CodeSys, so I'll get that going right now, get the installation up. This will probably take some time, so I will uh, continue once it is uh, once it's done. All right, now that installation is done. It took about 10 minutes. Um, now let's continue on. See, we have CodeSys here now. So let's open up CodeSys. First time it boots up, it'll probably take, you know, a minute. Okay, now that we're booted up, in order to use the Raspberry Pi with CodeSys, we need to install that package. So we go into Tools, Package Manager, and we will install. And we'll choose our desktop where those files were. Inside of Files, CodeSys, Raspberry Pi. So we'll say yes to this. Let it do its install. All right, now that that's done, we should just restart that application. So we're going to close CodeSys and then relaunch it. Now I'm going to plug in the Raspberry Pi. as there needs to be an update to the Raspberry Pi in order to communicate as well. So code sys is going to push out some code to the Raspberry Pi and then they'll be able to communicate and then we can move forward with the program. All right, so now if we go into tools, we should have an update Raspberry Pi folder here. And if we just click that, we give the Raspberry Pi credentials. So it's Pi and then Raspberry. You can do a scan if you're not sure of the device. And, it sh and that's correct, so this is 192.168.3.115. So just put that in, hit OK, and now it's going to push some code out. It's going to run a runtime, push some code out. And this is going through SSH, so this part is at least secure here. CodeSys is pretty good with being secure. The only time it's not secure is when you force it to do something that uh, is not secure, like Modbus goes through port 502, which is unsecure. So when you do something like that, then it's not secure. Also, I've noticed that the the um, web browser they use goes through HTTP. So you can see that in clear text, uh, which may cause you to be able to modify some things as well um, on the HMI side. So now that that is done, we can start our program. So we're just going to go to File, New Project. Standard project, you can call this anything. This will be... Project 1, all right, OK. And then it asks for the language we want and the type of device. So we're going to need to find the Raspberry Pi as a device. And then the language, you could choose ladder logic, you could choose sequential function, structured text, which is what I'm going to go with right now. 
And then we have all of these options down on the left side. So these are all different interface type things. Um, we'll be in this plan, we'll be using the PLC, which is your main program area. So this is what it looks like when you start a new project. Um, we'll be going into plc.prg, that's our main folder. And we have right now, we have the Canikit plugged in, so we'll be using the GPIOs uh, to do some more of the work here. So essentially what's going to happen here is we're going to program something. It's going to have a switch, a push button switch, and then a light. So when we push the switch, it'll turn the light on. And when we let go of the switch, the light will turn off. So for this, it's pretty basic. We, uh, after var here, we'll just be inputting x, and then our variable name, which for this we'll be using LED, and then this is going to be a Boolean, so true or false for this. And then our button, and the same, another bool. And then we can come down here, put some more logic in, LED colon equals, so here if x button is true, then x LED is true. So when X button is active, the light will be active. When it's not active, the light will not be active. That's all the work right there. And then we'll go into our GPIO. We'll assign these. So right now I'm using pins seventeen for my switch, so that would be my input. Um, so 17 here will be input, and then 27 for my output, so 27 output, and then we'll have to map them, so our input again here is 17, and we're choosing from our application, PLC, X button. Right, and then our output will be the light. So our output down here is 27, and we'll be doing the same thing. We'll be adding in LED this time. Okay, so now that's all we need for the program to work. It should work there on the device, but if we want to actually see this, then we'll have to add in a visualization. So we can do this by adding in an object here. I'm sorry, by going to application, add object, and visualization. And we want to make this active right away so we can work with this. So now it's going to create a visualization section and we can add in our buttons once they're populated. So if we go to toolbox down on the right and we go to lamps and switches, we can pull our lamp over. Uh, for me I have a blue lamp so I'll be changing this to blue here, and the variable is going to be in applications X LED. And now I'll be adding a switch, a push button. So once that's in, I can set the variable for this one to X button. Now we can save this. And we'll go over to our device. Our device was the 115. All right, so we can delete this 182.168.3.115 and hit enter. Should be able to connect to the device. If it can, it's green here, and you get the information saying it's connected. Now, what we can do is go back to our PLC or visual visualization and connect the device. We'll log into the device. Say yes to this, it's going to push the code out. See there's messages here. No errors, so that's good. Everything looks clean. Now we can go ahead and hit start. So here's our visualization. If we hit the button, the light turns off. And it does so on the on the breadboard as well. And now let me get the web server to come up. So if we go to HTTP 
3.115 slash oh, port 8080 slash web visu.html htm. This is where the website is hosted. So as you can see here, push down on the button, the light goes off. And now let me see if I can take my camera and show you what it's like. There's the light, push down on it, light turns off. So it's the, so it's the same thing, you push on it on the device or push on it on the, the, lamp, on the, the web interface and the light goes off. So that's the first, that's the first program. Now we'll go, now we can close this out. That worked fine for us, so we can stop this. Log out, save our project. And now we'll close this project and create a new project. So this one will be project two. And what we'll do for this one is we'll be using the same thing we're using the Raspberry Pi, the structured text here. What we'll be doing is we'll be using the, the Pi face for this one. So what I want to do here is shut off my system. So I'm going to go into my PuTTY client, which here is MOBA Xterm. Now when I use this, I can connect to my Raspberry Pi. I can start a new session. This is free, by the way, MOBA Xterm. It's a great tool. Pi is our username. Okay, so now that that's paring down, we're going to connect our Pi face, which has our traffic light information on it. Okay, now that our Pi face is our Pi is booted up, we can go back into Cotis. And what we need to do here is go into PLC again. And the program we'll be putting in, I'm just gonna copy and paste here to make it easier. So we're calling four in and four outs. So what this is is for the four switches that are on the Pi face and then we'll have four outs. So I know there's there's six outs, there's two, two, and two, um, but we'll be just using the switches, which will give us four outputs. And then we can also come in and put the structured text down here as well. Okay, now we can go, now we can save this. Now what we need to do is since we'll be using the Pi face, we'll need to add the device. So if we go to SPI, and then add device, SPI master is what we'll be adding. And then if we click the SPI master, we'll come down and add Pi face IO driver. Okay. Now if we go into Pi face IO driver, we can start doing the mapping. And for this, we have four ins and four outs. So for the ins, we'll be coming, we'll be mapping to by in zero, and then doing that all the way down. One, two, and three. There's four switches, but they start at zero. So we go zero, one, two, three. And now here's our output. We'll do the same thing, out zero, out one, out two, and out three. Okay, so that, all that work is done now.
Now I think that's it. So now we'll do the same thing. We'll go up to device. We'll add our pi. 192.168.315. Okay, we're connected. So now if we come into our PLC here. Oh, I didn't add a visualization. So let me do that. So we come up to application, add object, visualization. Now this will be a little more extensive as we have four switches and four LEDs. So switch one, the variable here is right here. We'll make that in zero. Second one will be in two, or in one, I'm sorry. Third one will be in two. And the last one will be in three. Now for the switches, now the pi, the traffic light actually looks more like this. And we could set a color so we can make this red. Make this one yellow, make this one green. Same here, make this yellow, or red. Make this yellow, make this green. And then for our variables, they'll go this direction, this will be switch one, we'll turn this one on. So that will be by out zero. By out one, by out two, and then by out three. Okay, so now we can save that. Now we can connect to the Pi, push the code. There are some warnings, but no errors. We'll see if it works. Okay, so you can see that when we push on the Pi, the lights are coming on the HMI, as well as on the Pi. So it's pretty neat, and then the switches work the same. like that. Pretty neat. Okay, now that's that one. We can log out of that again. Save this. And now we will close this program, this project, and start a new project. This final one will be our Modbus. Project 3. I'll be doing the Raspberry Pi again, and structure text again. So for the programming, this is not much to it. We'll add in this line, W modbus input. 
wmodbus input down on the structured text down there. We'll have to add a device in here, so an Ethernet device. Um, add device. Ethernet adapter. Ethernet. So we'll add that. Now we'll click the Ethernet, and now we'll add Modbus slave. TCP slave device. Now we'll close out of this. Now after that, we may need to make sure the libraries are all set. So I'll go into library, download missing libraries here. It's going to download the mod bus TCP slave. We'll allow that to happen. should be pretty quick. All right, now that's installed. And we can close out of the library. And we'll save this. All right, now we'll go into that device. We'll double click it. We'll change our interface to the right IP. This will be 192.168.3.115. The subnet mask is correct, and the gateway is 192.168.3.1. Okay, now we have the Modbus TCP slave. You can see it's coming in on port 502. And then we'll just want to set the input. And that will be right here, the input is going to be from the application again, PLC prog W modbus input. Okay, so that's all set on this end. We could save this. Now what we'll do is, now with, this is the part where we have two pies. So I have two pies at my desk. One is with uh, the one that has the pie face on it, the one that we've been doing the work on, and then the next one is a brand new one. And this will act as the PyFace Modbus server. So this is a fresh install of Raspberry Pi. I'm going to plug it in right now. Okay. And I'm also going to install Wireshark for this activity. So we'll get Wireshark on here. And the Pi is booting up. And for this one, it should be. We'll let the install continue. For this one, it should be 192.168.3.122. And this is Pi again. And we could give this a label Pi Modbus. So we know which one it is. All right, so we're in the Pi right now. You can see it's running. I am going to make a folder. Um, actually, I'm going to change to sudo right now, to super user. I'm going to make a folder called Pi Code, CD into it. There's nothing here right now. I have another. I can refresh this. The great thing about this program is it has a a traversal GUI on here as well. So, so I'm going to make a new directory again as pi. PyCode, CD into PyCode. And then I'll do the same here, go into PyCode. And then what I will be doing here is bring some code over that I have. So essentially what I'll be I'll need to do is an easy install. Um, what that's going to be doing is installing some Python code. Um, and then we'll install the Modbus configuration on top of that. So I'm just going to bring all these files over. So let me start with running. I'll show you what's in here. Let me start by running the Python um, easy install. So Python, nope, let me run as sudo 
Python easy install. So this will install a bunch of Python code, give us some repositories, and then we could do an, an easy install of Python dev, and then some Modbus activity. This I'll include with the files as well. All right, now that's done. Now the next thing we'll do is do another command to install Python dev. may already be installed. All right, so this will be installing it, 18 megs. All right, now that that's installed, we'll do one last install with sudo again. It's an easy install, and it'll be pymodbus. So this is going to give us all the modbus information to create the server on the new pi that we're using. All right, now we are. Here we have all of our code ready and view Modbus test pi. So this will be the code that will be running. From here we're using, we're pulling in the Modbus client, going over TCP. And this is a library from Python uh, and Raspberry Pi that we just imported into. Uh, this is Python code here. What we'll be doing is we'll be connecting to Modbus, creating a new thread uh, so it doesn't get interrupted. Um, we'll be connecting to our our client pi, which was the one with the pi face on it, our original pi, and then we'll be inputting a value from that, um, and it will be pushed to the register of the dot one fifteen client, and we'll be able to see that on the code sys side of things. All right, so let's minimize this. We can start Python right now and do mod bus test pi. Now it's waiting for a value. We'll go, we'll go back to CodeSys. We'll make sure we're ready here. I did want to make a slight adjustment. I needed to delete this and add it to the first input instead. So W mod bus input there. All right, now we can save this. We'll go to our device. We'll connect to the Pi, hit enter. Now we're connected. Now we can come to our program here, come log in up here, push the code out. And now uh, there are just some warnings, no errors, so that's good. And now we can hit the play button to start it up. Go to our code over here. We will look at the red value here. It says zero. Um, oh, also what I want to do is start up Wireshark. We'll connect to, remind me later, we'll connect to ETH zero. And we'll be looking for MBTCP. Okay, so we'll send the value. We'll send 200. We see it on this end here. 200 shows up. We don't see any Modbus activity. So this is good because what this means is that even though I'm on the same same network as the Modbus, um, as the client and the host, what this means is we can't see any of the traffic. So that's a great thing. So we can't do any man in the middle attacks right here. So what I can do to show you the traffic is add Wireshark to one of the pies. So if we come over to our PyFace pie. Actually, let me do it on the Modbus pie. I do a sudo apt get. Install Wireshark. And what I'll do now is 
stop this by hitting enter. Now we see the code is pushed back to zero now on the Pi side. And we get an interpreter here, which is good because you would think you would see the traffic, but we're actually seeing the Modbus traffic on the Pi, not, not on this VM that I'm running on. So now what we can do is we can stop that. We'll log out again. So something about CodeSys is it's free, but you have two hour limits and it pushes code onto the Pi. So after two hours, the Pi needs to be reset. So we're not there right now, but if you're, you're using it and nothing is working, you need to reset the Pi. It's a good tactic on them because if you use this in production, you never want to reset your devices. So they make sure that it's on the Pi and not the HMI side that needs to be reset. Okay, so we'll see how the install is going. Yes, let that complete. And then we can close out of the VMs, Wireshark that's on my VM, my Windows machine. And then we'll start the one that's on the Pi once it completes. So in order to get this traffic, another thing to get the Modbus traffic, or the, the packet sniffing tra if traffic with Wireshark, you need to have pseudo writes as well. Uh, so for this attack, not only do they need to get on your machine, but they also need to have sudo if they want to start sniffing these packets out with a program like Wireshark. So hopefully that doesn't happen. Hopefully there's some other things in place, defense and depth, right? We have many things that are running, um, IDSs, some snorts running. We have firewalls that are in place, um, gateways that are running. We have IP blacklist whitelisting that's going on, so only certain devices can even ever connect. We don't allow certain traversing, so you can't remote from one device to another. So all of those defense and depth tactics should be in play before um, you have systems that are in production live. But for here, we can see if, worst case, they do get on the system and they are able to get root access, they can use a program called Wireshark for the sniffing. And with that, uh, we can see what, what comes up with this. All right, now that that's installed, I'm going to run Wireshark. A nice thing, again, about Mobax term, it allows you to run um, XServe, so GUI interface programs through it without much interaction. Normally, I don't have to do anything. I just call up Wireshark. But because I'm going to be running as root, I need to sudo, I'll switch users, and then with that, I'll export the display to my Windows VM. So for this, we need to find out what the IP is. So it's 192.168.3.121. So if we export that, 192.168.3.121 colon 0, 0.0. And now if we call Wireshark with the ampersand to run in the background, it's asking X, Mobax Therm is saying, XServe, do you want to allow this to run? Yes. Yes, we'll allow it. Yes, we'll allow all this. Now Mobax Therm should start to pop up here. It'll happen down in the taskbar, like it's a Windows program. As you can see, it's starting to right now. Now once it loads, we're going to tap into the network that's on the Raspberry Pi, which is ETH0. We'll hit start. And then we'll filter for Modbus traffic again. Right now there should be none. So now let's go Activate the Modbus test program. All right, that's running. We'll go into CodeSys. We'll reconnect. And then we will start this. Now we'll go back. We'll enter another value, say 70. Hit input. That is there. We'll hit enter again. 
closes that out. Now we'll look at Wireshark, and now you can see all the Modbus traffic that occurred. So no more is, is taking place because we're not sending anymore, but this is all queries that are taking place, right? And the right sing single registers. See all that? And if we look at the Modbus, come down here. Give us some more detail on what's happening there, right? So if an attacker can get on and they do have pseudo access, they can get in here and they can see the data that is getting transmitted here. So, so that's it. I hope you liked my little demo that I did here. Um, it was pretty involved. It was a lot of fun. I'm not very good with CodeSys, but I'm good enough to learn pretty quickly. Uh, it's pretty great. I think I'll, I'll play more with it and try to do some more interaction with the Pi with this. Um, so thanks for watching, and go Nova!